Good morning. Welcome to worship in this season of Easter. Welcome to all of you who are here, any visitors we have, and welcome to the Halversons and the Bratlands and the Agadals. And um, this is a blessed day for baby Lila. We're very excited. Welcome to all of you who are listening on the radio or watching on Facebook Live. We are just so glad to have you with us, however you are able to join us. Um, a couple of quick announcements. First of all, thanks to everybody um, for Holy Week and Easter who made that all possible. The worship team, Gary, um, just everyone who we still have quite a bit of festive um, decoration up here and that is just um, so wonderful. Just an announcement, if you um, contributed a flower of any kind, you are welcome to take that flower home. Our, I think I've mentioned this before, the church staff sometimes don't always take care of it as well as you would at home. Um, don't leave your children here either. Um, maple syrup, Pastor Lane and um, his whole crew made maple syrup, was that Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday, and so we have maple syrup for sale again. We've been without, I have been rationing mine at home. So if you um, would like some maple syrup, uh, it's $10 a jar and all the, the proceeds um, help to support our youth programs. Um, upcoming next uh, Sunday, the worship team and communications team are doing their monthly um, event in the evening about, I think, Lori, is it 5.30? 5.30 for stone soup. I grew up on Captain Kangaroo and the, um, the story stone soup and so, you know, the, well, I'm not gonna give it away, but basically if you want to bring a vegetable, that might enhance the stone soup a little bit. Their um, St. Patrick's Day soup supper was a great success. Um, so hopefully um, you guys can fellowship at this one as well. And we are still looking for someone to help lead the meatball dinner, the sit and my meatball dinner. So if you feel called to tell people what to do, um, on a meatball dinner type event, um, that might be just the, the calling for you. There's a lot of other things in the bulletin. I'm not gonna read them all, but please peruse at your leisure, not during the sermon, please. And um, we uh, have, like I said, we have a lot of things coming up over the next few months, and um, it's very exciting. And I think that is it, unless anyone else has any other announcements. Then let's all take a deep cleansing breath. Let's breathe in the Spirit of God. Let's breathe out all our cares and anxieties as we prepare to worship. God is with us. Please stand as you are able. Worship begins with confession and forgiveness found on page 94 of your red hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our opening hymn is number 363, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Worship continues with the prayer of the day found on page two of your bulletin. We pray together. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, help us show the power of the resurrection in all we say and do. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Invite the children to come forward for a message. Ava, come on up. I can always count on you. You are super. Okay. Look, I got a story to tell. You know how sometimes people get afraid of things? And sometimes when they're afraid, they do some pretty crazy stuff. It's like in the gospel story, the disciples, as it starts, they're afraid, so they've locked themselves in their room. When I was a kid, my parents sent me to my room and locked me there. But this time, they locked themselves in because they're afraid. And uh, people do crazy things. So there's a story 
about a town and they know that people are coming and they know that they're going to be looking for food and a place to stay. And so all the people lock all of their food stuff up, their carrots, their all sorts of things. And so because they don't want to share, look what I found. What does this remind you of? This is a rock from my house. What does it look like? A potato, yes, a russet potato. Do you want that? No? Okay. It's a russet potato, but this uh, is a stone. And so the people, the soldiers, when they got to town, and nobody had any food, they couldn't find anything, so the soldiers said, well, that's okay, we'll make stone soup. And so they took stones like this that looked like a russet potato, they stuck it in a pot, and they started, put some water, and they started heating it and cooking it. And then they'd taste it, and they'd say, oh, you know, if we only had a few carrots, that would really add to this. And the town people were all circled around because they were thinking, these guys are really nutso. And sure enough, one person said, well, well, I've got some carrots. And she ran home and got them. And they cut them up, and they threw them in the soup, and then they tested the soup again, even though it was just stone and carrots. And, and one said, you know what? Onions would really be good in this, but we don't have any onions. But someone said, I have onions at home. And they ran home and they got onions. And they put those in and they tasted, oh, this is getting better all the time. And they said, well, you know, uh, if we only had some turnips, that would kind of be a great thing to add to this. You have the turnip book at school? Yeah. They're really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, but it's, yeah. But it's about the <clears throat> Yep, well, they would have needed a huge one. And they added turnips to it, and it went on and on. And pretty soon, you know what they had? Instead of stone soup, they had vegetable soup. And they had a lot of it. And, you know, all the town people who were so afraid they were looking, they were really curious. And the soldiers said, well, we'll share with you. And you know, then their spirits went from being fearful to being joyful because the soldiers were going to share their stone soup, which now had become vegetable soup. And so, you know what happened? They got so much spirit, the town people, they started to dance. Can you believe that? Dancing. Because they had vegetable soup and stone soup and they were all sharing and they all had a good time because they had that spirit in them and they weren't afraid anymore. Should we have a word of prayer? Okay. Oh, I forgot to say we're having stone soup at church next Sunday. So if any of you are hiding carrots and hoarding onions and, or anything like that, be free, feel free to bring them by. And we'll have stone soup. And maybe we'll dance in the basement. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, yeah well, let's pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give thanks for people who are willing to share and, and willing to be with one another and enjoy one another's spirit and to share the story of Jesus and his resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go sit down. Can I sit with you? Should we go sit? No, I can't sit with you? Okay, well, you go back to Mary, and I'll go sit by Peter. First reading is from Acts 4, verses 32 to 35. While the apostles testified to others about the resurrection of Jesus, the early Christian community shared what they owned or sold their possessions to help their fellow believers who were in need. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned 
was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was on them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or horses, sold them, bought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they need. As they need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly Psalm 133 as found in your bulletin. How very good and pleasant it is. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. The second reading is from 1 John, verses 1 to 2. The opening of this letter serves as a reality check. The reality of God is light, but our confessed reality has been sin. God cleanses us from sinful reality through Christ's death so that we live in fellowship with Christ and walk in God's light. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. We declare to you what was from the beginning and what, what we have heard, what we have seen our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of the life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do, do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have the fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make a lie. We make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for the second Sunday of Easter comes from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Glory to you, O Lord. The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. But one of their number is missing, and his unbelief prompts another visit from the Lord. Listen now to the good news the Spirit is bringing to the church. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, and you may be seated. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Risen Christ, in this first week after Easter, we give thanks for the light of God that lets us see Jesus, the one whose blood saves us to live with you forever. In your name we pray. Amen. So here we are one week after Easter, and in our reading for today, we um, are coming just off of Holy Week. So when it talks about evening on that day, it's that same day, that resurrection day. So this verse that we just read is encompassing from Easter all the way to, in our time today, a week in the life of the disciples and in uh, the life of Jesus. Now, as I was um, preparing this week, I happened to see two really great jokes. Now, I don't always start my sermon with a joke, but these two were just too hard to resist. So the first one uh, is about Joseph of Arimathea. Now, you will remember that on Good Friday, um, when Jesus was being prepared for death, Joseph offered his tomb for Jesus. And later, one of his friends said to him, Joseph, you're a rich man. You paid a lot for that tomb. How can you just give it away? And Joseph said to him, well, it's only for three days. <laughs> okay, so that's the first one. That gets us up to Easter. Then the second one I saw was the disciples are sitting around a fire, and they're a little bit gloomy, and the one is saying, you know, I know he was really special, but dead men don't come back. He's standing right behind me, isn't he? So that gets us to where we are today. The disciples have retreated to a locked room. And like I said, this text is literally the, the continuation of our Easter text from last week. A week for us, but a few hours for the disciples. It's only been a few hours since Mary ran back from the tomb to the disciples and said, I have seen the Lord. It's been a few hours since they got this really good news. And what do they do? They retreat to this locked room. What's changed for them in those few hours? Why are they so fearful? Why are they not out celebrating? Why are they not looking for Jesus and trying to pick up where they left off? They're so fearful. And I have to ask the question, in this week since Easter, what has changed for us? Do we feel bigger, more uplifted, more joyful in this Easter celebration? Or are we sometimes thinking it's been 2,000 years and we're still waiting and it doesn't seem like that much has changed? So for the disciples, fear was a little bit understanding, uh, understandable because they didn't know what was going to happen with this, Jesus, this new Jesus who has risen from the dead. What would the Jewish authorities do? What would the Roman authorities do? do to them. And let's just face it too for us, you know, we had a big celebration, but there's still war in the world, there's still hunger in the world, there's still sorrow in our lives. 
What's changed in this celebration? When we read this text, we often, the thing that we often remember the most part is that it's called the Doubting Thomas story. But honestly, that's not exactly all that this story has to tell us. I mean, first of all, Thomas is a little bit of a minor character, or at least not, you know, the main part of the story. But the second part is, why wouldn't he doubt? He wasn't there that first week. So he didn't get to see Jesus. He didn't get to talk to him. He didn't get that, you know, breath of the Holy Spirit on him. So it's only natural that he would doubt. The great thing is, when Jesus does come back through that locked door once again, Thomas had originally said, I need to see, I need to see, I need to touch. But he doesn't, actually. Once he sees Jesus, he believes. He says, my Lord and my God. This is good news for us. Pardon me, I'm just getting a little bit of vertigo right now. Um, This is good news for us because we also don't have an opportunity to see. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. That's us. We haven't seen. We celebrate week after week, year after year. But this is all done on faith. That's us. But still, doubts persist because we live in a broken world. It's only natural that the disciples would feel really discombobulated about all of this. Now, let me tell you a little parable. Jesus loved to tell parables, and so I'm going to tell a parable. On Thursday, a pastor you may or may not know went up to the Twin Cities to go to the Twins game. In this Twins game, there were a lot of people, and so when we got into downtown, we had to park in a ramp that we had never parked in before. So we leave our car, take a picture of the place where we had parked the car, looked out, we could see the stadium from the parking lot, walked down, over, had a medium great time at the game, won't say what the outcome was, but I think you all know what it was, went back exactly the way that we thought we had come, come out into that floor, floor six, where we had taken the picture, the car is not there. The car is not there. And we look at each other, and we're kind of discombobulated. We had the car. We took the picture. We saw where we went. We came back. The car is gone. Okay, let's try again. Go down in the elevator. Come back up. And we were told, go towards the green. So we went towards the green, and there was the car. It's like a miracle. And this is how it was for the disciples as well. Jesus is there. Jesus is gone. Jesus is back. I don't know what to think. It's a miracle, and yet it's still really discombobulating. I don't know where the car was during that time. It's a very strange ramp. So we live in this broken world. Sometimes it's really hard to figure out where Jesus is. Even when we have tiny Jesus somewhere in the pews, it's hard to figure out where Jesus is sometimes, because it doesn't feel like Jesus is close sometimes. John's letter tells us that it's been since the beginning of the world, this, 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 since the 2,000 years ago that this story has been told. John says in this letter, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This is testimony that has been passed on and on and on, generation after generation. And this testimony is trustworthy. We can trust this. And it can make our joy complete. Maybe not every day, because there will always be some sorrow in the world. But Jesus is there in those times as well. And there's more good news. John tells us that Jesus was the atoning sacrifice for us but also for the sins of the whole world. Remember, God shows no partiality. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we think, you know, our way of believing is better than those believers over there, or this denomination, or this sect over here. But what Jesus tells us is that he came for the whole world, and John reasserts that. The atoning sacrifice for 
our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And that is incredibly good news. There is more good news. Jesus will go through a locked door to assure you, for all of us. That is really, really good news. So what does it mean to live in Jesus' name? What does it mean, as Jesus said at the end of this story, you will have life in his name? Sometimes I think about what, it, what we use this phrase, uh, live in the life, right? Live in the life is when you've got all the money in the world and you live in a mansion and a big boat and you don't have to work. But then other times we say it a little more sarcastically, right? We say, I'm living the life because I'm, you know, cleaning out the barn or, you know, fixing something or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Living the life can be not good as well as good. That's how we use it. But what does it mean to live life in his name? It means to accept that that forgiveness is not just ours, but it's ours for the whole world. It's to hear and believe that when Jesus went through that locked door, he offered peace, not once, not twice, but three times. It's to know that our joy is made complete in the faith that we have in Jesus. Let us pray. God of light, protect us from the dark path of sin. Guide us all of our days and lead us in your path of light to always see that Jesus is the Savior of the world. In your name we pray, amen. Our next hymn is number 635, We Walk by Faith. Our baptismal family and sponsors and anyone else who wants to come up is welcome to come up here. I know I've said this before, anytime I marry a couple, I take partial responsibility when they have a child. But I don't want to raise her. You guys can raise her. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through holy baptism. The power of sin is put to death in the waters and we are raised with Jesus Christ to new life. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and sent out in mission for the life of the world. Who presents Lila for holy baptism? Lila's family and sponsors, will you raise and nurture her in the Christian faith? We will with God's help. 
Will you faithfully bring her to worship and teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments? We will, with God's help. Will you place in her hands the Holy Bible, read it with her, and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith? We will, with God's help. Will you be an example by the way you live that Lila may grow in the faith and continue in the promises of her baptism? With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lila K. Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sponsors and parents, you can lay hands on Lila. Okay. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, wash them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Lila with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Through baptism, Lila has been received into the household of God, entrusted with the good news of Jesus Christ, and strengthened to serve by the holy and life-giving spirit. We welcome you into the body of Christ and the mission we share. Join us as we give praise to God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And we've got a whole um, wonderful chest made by Greg Wenis, and the cloth there was made by Mary Newgard. We've got a Lord's Prayer and a Bible and all the things we just um, talked about to uh, promise um, that you guys promised to, to teach her. We also have certificates for each of you guys, so you can get that. But in the meantime, we need to introduce you.
Worship continues with the prayers. Please stand as you are able. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you draw near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Regina. Bless our ELCA partner congregations in Southeast Minnesota, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Colombia, and at the southern border. And bless this congregation and all our ministries. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. And we pray especially today, Lord, for the people of Gaza and Israel, Ukraine and Russia. We also pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially those in our community, our congregation, and our families. For Linda Nursted Kemp, Dee Wenis, Ricky Rood, Wilder Sherburn, Lorna Caston, Connie Simon, Brian Henkel, Jerry Warden, Judy Tollefsrud, Carson Betcher, Lori Vestersey, Terry Rudy Simon, Ione Selness, Janet Fossum, Pastor Bob Stoskoff, Nadia Wold, Lois Steele, Lisa Aquat, Linda Tollefsrud, Paul Morkin, Lori Hagen Jensen, Lucas A.J. Wistie, Mary Amundsen, Anna Bingham Yiris, Rachel Krensky, Sharon Onstead Johnson, Mavis Johnsrud, and Jennifer Wedman. And we celebrate the baptism of Lila K. Ann Agadal. We also pray now for all those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living God. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. You may share that peace with one another. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Should it all time? 
and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had again given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The table is set and all are welcome. If you would prefer, you're welcome to come up for a blessing.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, dear people of God, receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is number 815, I Want to Walk as, the child, as a Child of the Light. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>